Welcome to the SSL Live, and thank you for taking the time to learn more about our groundbreaking console. Solid State Logic has been designing leading edge mixing consoles for more than 35 years. We have a long history of delivering benchmark audio quality and introducing unique design concepts in products that have become world standards in recording, broadcast, and post production. Innovation is in our DNA. And SSL's first live console applies the SSL design philosophy to deliver a forward-thinking, creative tool for live sound mixing. This video is an introduction to the user interface of the SSL Live console. With Live, we have used the latest technologies to create an incredibly flexible but simple to use console. In Live Audio, there is only one chance to get things right, so confidence and speed are key. We've designed an interface that gives engineers freedom to mix as they wish. This is an interface designed by human beings for human beings. Because each engineer approaches his mix in a unique way, it's very important that the console allows them to mix the way they prefer. The live interface adapts to your preferences and needs by allowing you to use the combination of available navigational tools which suits your own approach. There are often several different ways to approach a specific control task. One way to control channels is using the two capacitive multi-gesture screens. These operate in a similar way to your smartphone or tablet with smooth, direct control using tap, drag, pinch, and many of the other interactions we use intuitively with gadgets in our everyday lives. There are also a large number of hardware controls available for when you need to grab something physical and want fine control of your mix. All of the rotary controls on the live console are fully interpolated or geared so that they respond and interact with you just like an analog control would. This means that the console senses how quickly and in what direction you are turning a control and updates the audio at the same rate. This is key to the way the control surface feels, but also how it interacts with an engineer as you are listening and controlling the mix. The powerful processing and I.O. architecture of the Live is extremely flexible. The console can have up to 976 physical inputs and 976 physical outputs. There is a selection of local I.O. and stage boxes for remote I.O. The power within Live's mix engine is allocated according to configuration. It has 192 simultaneous mix paths available at 96 kHz. These can be assigned as input channels, stem groups, auxes, and masters to suit demand, and configured as mono, stereo, or LCR with either full processing or dry as required. 144 of the mix paths are full processing paths, and 48 mix paths are dry. A mono channel will use one path, a stereo two, and an LCR consumes three. In addition to Live's flexible mix engine processing, a separate matrix is also available, which can be fed from channels, stem groups, auxes and masters. The matrix, which can be segmented into four separate smaller matrices if desired, offers 36 paths with two insert points per path, has gain control on each crosspoint and full routing of outputs to any required destination. Each of the matrices has 32 discrete inputs available, offering up to 128 inputs and 36 outputs. With multiple interface approaches, multi-gesture screens, assignable controls, and a more traditional channel strip, all available, all of the time, working seamlessly together, flexibility is what the live interface is all about. So let's take a look at the control surface layout. The live's control surface uses a number of panels or tiles, which make up its hardware user interface. Each tile has specific functions and controls allowing fast access to channels and their parameters. The fader tiles, with 12 faders per tile, are used to access all the different channel types. The Live can be fitted with two or three fader tiles, offering either 24 or 36 channel faders in total. The master tile is home to the controls for automation, solo buses and mute groups. And the channel tile is the Live's equivalent of an analog channel strip, with a one control per function approach. The main 19-inch multi-gesture touchscreen is mounted in the centre of the control surface. But let's start by looking in more detail at the fader tiles. The fader tile contains 12 faders. Each fader has a 14-segment level meter, a 5-segment gain reduction meter for the compressor, and an identical one that shows the gain reduction for the gate. Each fader has mute, solo and select buttons. 
The assigned name and colour is shown above the select button within the label display, along with information on solo setup and parameter values. Each fader tile can present channels using five user layers. Within each layer, there are five configurable banks that can contain up to 12 channels each. The combination of five layers and then five banks within those layers means that each fader tile can access 25 banks of 12 faders each. We can place any channel type onto any fader, meaning we can place input channels, bus masters or VCAs wherever we need them. We can also place the same channel on as many banks as we wish. Each fader tile is independent of the others, so the layer of layers and banks does not need to be symmetrical across the available tiles and can be customised as required. Layers are accessed from the arrow keys, with the label display showing the currently selected layer name and the next above and below. The colour assigned to the active layer is also displayed here. The layers will cycle round continuously in either direction using the arrow keys. Within each layer, the five banks are selected by pressing the call buttons. The name of that bank is shown in the LCD display along with the colour assigned to it. So how do we assign channels to the faders? The layer manager found within the setup menu is where we configure our layers and banks. This screen is split into two sections. The top half shows the source layers, banks and channels. This is where we wish to assign from. There is a tile select drop down menu that selects the source tile. The bottom half of the screen is our destinations, showing the tile layers and banks we wish to copy to. There is a tile select drop down here too. There are two types of sources, preset layers and user layers. Preset layers are used to access all the channels that have been configured within the console's mix architecture, and they are laid out in sequential logical blocks. You can use these as starting points for your own user layers if you wish. User layers are simply the layers and banks that are actually active on the fader tiles, so are the ones used to navigate. We can create user layers very intuitively using various drag and drop methods. The simplest is to drag and drop whole layers or banks. Simply select the layer or bank you wish to use by tapping and holding over the button. Then drag down to the layer or bank button on the position on the destination tile. We can use a similar method with individual channels by selecting a single or multiple channels and dragging them down to the destination tile. Once we've set up the layers, banks and channels, we can drag and drop or shuffle within the tile to rearrange them as required. We can also name and colour each layer and bank from here too. Once we have set up one tile, we can select another tile in the lower destination section of the screen to start configuring the next one. If we would like all the tiles to be the same, we can select user layers in the source section and select the tile that we worked on previously from the drop down menu. We can then use the drag and drop method to copy all the layers from that tile to the new destination, then customise that tile's layout if we wish, or we can start from scratch. Remember that each tile is independent of the others, which means that if we have three fader tiles fitted, we have 75 banks of faders available, giving us immense flexibility with how the layout of mixed channels is presented. At the top of each of the fader tiles, there are a set of rotary encoders we call the quick controls, with three soft buttons associated with them. These are used to control the parameters within the channel's processing. One of the ways the live human interface guides you while mixing is by using our full colour backlit buttons. These are only lit when there is a function assigned to them, making it clear when they are active. Because they are full colour, they also show what the currently active or selected function is. Predefined colours keep the display consistent and relevant. The LEDs next to each encoder show which encoders are active and also change colour according to their current selected function. As well as the colour of the quick control LEDs and buttons telling you what functions they are controlling, the currently assigned function is displayed to the right within the label display. The up-down arrow keys will cycle through the processing blocks of the channel and the name of the parameters currently assigned to the quick controls will be displayed here.
If the selected function has more than one set of parameters, such as EQ or dynamics, then pressing down on the quick control encoder will cycle through those parameters. The flip button allows any function to be moved or flipped from the quick controls down onto the faders, allowing control from both a rotary controller or fader for things like auxiliary mix levels. The flip function can be tile specific or global. The screen button places any of the tiles onto the main touchscreen, allowing you to view any bank of channels from any of the fader tiles. This becomes our main interface with the console. There is one button that we have not talked about yet, the Q button. Q stands for Query. This function allows us to ask a question of any channel on the live console. When we press the Q button on a channel, the other fader tile or tiles will show all the channels that the query channel is contributing to. This can work in either direction, from an input or output. Meaning, if I query an input channel, I can see all the destinations that it is contributing to, including stems, auxes, masters and VCAs. I can also do the same in reverse. If we query an output bus, we can see on the other fader tiles all the channels that are contributing to that mix. We can also query VCAs, accessing all the channels assigned to it. The master tile is where we find the hardware controls for automation, mute groups, solo, and talkback. We also have two additional assignable faders as part of this tile. The focus fader will automatically follow the selected channel and includes all the same buttons and meters as the fader tiles. The focus fader works in conjunction with the channel tile that we will look at later. The second or main fader can be assigned to any channel on the live console. Once assigned, this will stay fixed to that channel until you change it. This is perfect for controlling master bus outputs for front of house mixing or solo outputs when mixing monitors. Next to the focus fader are the automation controls. We have a label display that shows the scene names, forward and backwards, and a go button. There are also additional buttons for creating new scenes, storing, etc. There are 10 mute groups. The buttons will not be backlit until we have assigned channels to them, so we know which ones are active. Channels can be assigned either from the touch screen or by pressing and holding the mute group button until it flashes. Then, using the channel select buttons to add the required channels to that group, we can select multiple channels by pressing and holding the select button and selecting another channel. Press the mute group button again to confirm the button will now be backlit. Lastly, we have the solo and talkback controls. The channel tile gives us hands on control of all of the functions of a channel. It has a 5.7 inch multi gesture touchscreen at its centre with controls around the outside, which will map according to the selected function. This layout is similar to an analog channel strip and gives the operator a control per function interface. The large square buttons access the processing blocks and functions, with the smaller buttons controlling functions such as EQ in out. When we press the select button for a processing block, the assigned functions for the controls will be shown on the touchscreen with strong, clear graphics to show you exactly what is going on and numeric values beside each control. The selected processing for the channel tile and the quick controls are independent of each other so that we have hardware control over two different parts of the selected channel at the same time. One of the many innovations we have incorporated into the Live's human interface is the impressive 19-inch multi-gesture main screen. This is the first use of capacitive screen technology in a professional mixing console and can interface with the operator using many of the gestures or tricks you've become acquainted with when using your tablet or smartphone. We've seen how this simple but powerful interface works already when we looked at the layer manager, for instance, but there are many more ways we can use it. 
The main screen is a window into the live console, giving us direct and intuitive access to the powerful functions and processing of the whole system. The seamless interaction between the main screen, quick controls and the channel tile means we can use any or all of these control options. This is the kind of flexibility Live loves to offer. Now let's take a closer look. The channel view shows us the bank of faders that have been selected using the screen button on the fader tiles. The processing of the selected bank of channels is shown in a vertical format, similar to an analog channel strip. The blue outline shows the currently selected channel. A large amount of information is being presented within this view, allowing an operator to see, at a glance, key information on the selected bank of channels. The main screen also works in conjunction with the quick controls on the fader tiles. Selecting a parameter on the screen by tapping it also assigns that parameter automatically to the quick controls. At the top of the screen, we can see the channel number, name, digital trim value, phantom power and polarity settings. Tapping any of the channels in this area will select the input gain onto the quick controls. You will see the LEDs and buttons change colour to red if we have analog gain selected. The parameter that is currently selected to the quick controls is displayed here in the channel overview screen. So, as we step through the functions, you will see them appear on the channel overview screen and the quick controls too. Double tapping on any of the meters will expand them to offer a high resolution meter. Double tap again to close it. You can see that the meters follow the format of the channel, so a stereo channel shows both L and R meters, an LCR channel shows all three meters. Underneath the meters are the six routing related buttons. Mute groups, VCAs, masters, fader, stem, aux. Tapping on the aux button opens a view in blocks of eight auxes. If there are more than eight aux buses configured within the console, we can use the bank buttons to the right to bring up the remaining aux buses. Once we have the aux buses on screen, we can tap the button for an individual aux within any of the vertical channel strips, and this will bring that aux send down onto the quick controls, and also display it within the quick control view on the screen. Selecting things in the main screen can be done in two different ways. A lock function is used to switch between the two modes. When the padlock is closed or locked, selecting from the screen by tapping on a button or function will only select it to the quick controls. Alternatively, the padlock can be unlocked by tapping on it. Now, when you tap something on the channel view screen, it will be selected and turned on or off at the same time. You will see a similar lock function throughout the software of the live console, and it always functions the same way. Underneath the quick control view are the six audio processing select buttons, and at the bottom we have the channel name and iconics icon. Below the routing select buttons, there is an overview window. This will show an overview of the currently selected parameters. If you have a routing section selected, it will show all the buses those channels are routed to. If you have EQ selected, the overview will show this and the filters too. If you double tap on the overview window, this will open the channel detail view. The detail view presents control of a channel's parameters in fine detail. We can look at all the parameters for each part of a channel's processing from this large clear window. On the left, we have the processing select buttons. These are similar to buttons we saw in the channel view screen, but this time we can see more of the auxes within one window, rather than banking them in eights. Let's go through all the processing buttons, starting with naming and colouring a channel. By tapping on the channel button, we can change the name of the selected channel. You can tap the clear button, and then double tap on the name field to rename it using the on-screen keyboard. We can also easily apply a colour to assist in navigating large numbers of channels. You can block colour associated channels such as drums, keyboards and vocals. As well as colours, we can assign images too. Iconics are unique to SSL and are simple icons or pictograms that you can assign to any channel type. 
Your brain recognises colours and shapes before it recognises names or text, so assigning a colour and icon to each channel speeds up your brain's reaction time. There are over 260 different icons available to help you find the most apt for the channel type you are looking at. The iconics are broken down into categories so that they are easier to navigate. There are also sets of default names to help save with typing. When using the main screen, the quick controls can be used to provide high precision hardware control with both the channel view and the detail view. The context of the quick controls can be changed to follow either of these views, offering control of a single function within a large number of channels across the tiles, or a set of parameters within the selected channel by selecting the detail view. The seamless interaction of the live console's control options is key to the flexibility of the live interface. The precision hardware operation available with knob per function style control in the channel tile, assignable style control with the quick controls, and dedicated hardware control within the fader and master tiles, combines with the most advanced touchscreen control available in an elegant, seamless, and highly ergonomic way. Live offers a system that allows engineers to mix the way they want to mix. Whichever you prefer, or in whichever combination, Live can mould to your needs. Thank you for watching this overview of the Live console interface. We hope it has shown you enough to want to learn more.